in an electrochemical cell chemical energy is converted into electrical energy the chemical redox reaction take place spontaneously which mean that no external energy is required to carry out such reaction this redox reaction take place at two places within the cell where there is an interface between a solid phase and an aqueous phase these two phase systems within the cell are called half cells which normally constitute of a solid phase called the electrode and an aqueous phase called the electrolyte to understand how an electrochemical cell function we will focus our attention on the galvanic cell as shown it has two half cells this one has a zinc strip dipped in zinc sulfate solution and this one has a copper strip dipped in a copper sulfate solution reduction and oxidation reaction take place at the interface over here in this case the rate of oxidation reaction is higher so here oxidation reaction is spontaneous it is called anode which is the negative electrode and which is drawn on the left here zinc strip loses mass and is called metallic corrosion and the zinc sulfate solution get concentrated here reduction reaction rate is higher so reduction take place spontaneously it is called cathode which is the positive electrode and is drawn on the right here copper strip mass increases and is called metal deposition and the copper sulfate solution get diluted see carefully that all the words over here are alphabetically prior to these words over here after some time the reaction rate of the forward and backward reaction become equal and the dynamic equilibrium is set up and the redox reaction seem to stop at this stage the potential difference at the interface of the two phases is called the electrode potential which depend on temperature and concentration of the metal ion in the solution and when standard conditions like these are maintained it is called standard electrode potential indicated by a not symbol actually we have to look into the matter from a different angle which will definitely give you a clear concept see carefully that now the zinc strip has excess electrons and zinc sulfate solution has excess zinc ions the copper strip has positive holes and the copper sulfate solution is left with excess anions so all these metal strips and the solutions in which they are dipped have lost what is called electroneutrality when this electroneutrality is lost electrostatic forces arise within which prevent flow of electron when there is no flow of electron the redox reaction will stop and electric current cannot be got so to restore this electroneutrality we have to do two things firstly we join the two electrodes by a wire such that the excess electrons may flow from anode to cathode thereby restoring the electroneutrality of the metal strips but the job is not done yet because we have to restore the electroneutrality of the solutions as well so we introduce a salt bridge over here containing a strong electrolyte like sodium sulfate in the form of semi solid paste with agar agar and gelatin sulfate ions migrate to anode compartment and also sulfate ions from cathode compartment to salt bridge in order to restore electroneutrality of the solutions the sodium and sulfate ions do not take part in the cell reaction the reason why the electrolyte used in the salt bridge is called inert electrolyte sometimes a porous membrane is used instead of a salt bridge through which ions migrate to maintain electroneutrality now a steady electron flow is observed from anode to cathode we introduce a voltmeter over here which shows the cell emf this is the consequence of the free energy supplied by the cell reaction to carry the electrons this cell emf can also be thought of as the sum of two electrode potentials as per convention we can take only reduction potentials and not oxidation potentials so the electrode potential of the anode is made negative at standard condition the equation may be written like this